So Elementor had their looking forward webinar yesterday. And if you're interested in finding out our thoughts, myself and Imran's, we will be going live tomorrow on Wednesday to discuss what was included in that, our thoughts on it and so on. So if you want to check that out, there will be a link in the description. And if you're watching this after that particular date, the link will be there so you can watch the replay anyway. Okay, so there's a new update or beta release for Elementor 3.11. And I thought I wanted to cover a couple of the things that have been added in this one, because there are some things that have recently been asked to be included, but also have been asked for a very long time. So let's take a quick look. Now, I'll put a link to this, which is the kind of GitHub, which will give you all the information about all the things that have been added and how to recreate them for yourself so you can test these out if you want. Obviously, not on a live site. But there's a couple of things, like a pro carousel, a loop carousel. We've got the copy and paste between websites. Eh. Performance, responsive background image sizes, which I will show you in this video, and also the pop-up builder with new advanced rules for date and time ranges, which for some reason, I don't actually have that in my particular setup, even though I'm running the latest version of this in beta using the developer's edition. Okay, so with that being said, let's hop over now into our site. I've got a page created. I've also gone ahead and enabled the container element and so on. So we've got some of those experimental features all set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, drop a container inside here, once I've done that, I'm going to select it and just go ahead, set the minimum height, and we're going to set this to be, let's just say 50%. It doesn't really matter too much. And then we go over into the style section, and we've got our background types as normal. We can click on classic. You'll now notice that we get the image, and we get the option now for the different responsive modes for desktop, tablet, and mobile. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can add an image in. So we're going to grab this one, which is a large image for the hero section, for example, on a page for the desktop version. So we can set any parameters we want inside there. So we can set how we want this to display. We can say whether we want to repeat it and so on. All the things you're kind of used to. We'll set this to be to cover like that. Let's come back over and let's just go ahead now and change this over to the tablet view. You can see this now ghosts the image to say you can use this if you want to, but you can change it for something else. Also, click on the plus. Let's choose a different image this time. Let's grab something that's a little smaller, something we can obviously see the difference in. We'll insert that. You can see it picks up most of the settings, but if you want to tweak some of those, we can do. And finally, let's hop over into the mobile view, select a completely different image this time. We'll grab this one, insert it, and let's just update the page. So now if we go ahead and preview this, okay, so in our preview, you can see now we've got the hero section with the larger image. If I just set this so I can resize it. You can see when we go to mobile view, you can see we've got the different image and when we come over into any of the different breakpoints, you can see it now updates accordingly. So we've now got more control over those backgrounds across the different kinds of breakpoints, something I know a lot of people have been asking for for quite some time. So that is included in this beta release. Hopefully this won't be long before this is released into the wild and we have the fully fledged version. So next on the agenda is the loop carousel. Now in a previous video on the beta features, I showed you the loop option and how you can use that. This works in fundamentally the same way. So if we do a search for loop, we now have loop carousel. The only difference is this is not a grid, it's a carousel. So if you've been hacked your way around creating something like this, you won't have to do that hacking for too much longer. So as always, you can see we get this sort of preview of what it's going to look like, and then we can select the template we want to use. You can create it from inside you, like I've covered in the loop builder, or you can just go and create one and use it externally inside the normal template section and then reference it inside you, which is what I'm going to do so I don't bore you too much. So we'll select the template. We can choose in this example between posts and products because I've got WooCommerce installed. So if you wanted to use this with WooCommerce products, you could do that. However, we're gonna leave this as it is. Go and grab our loop template. And you see that now pulls in the relevant products, images, posts, whatever it is you set up and created. You can also then come into the query if you want to query this. And again, you can see we've got different source options for posts, pages, and so on. So we can grab things from there. So if you're using a custom post type, for example, like I've got here with books, I could select that from here as well. And I can do my include, excludes, include different sort of taxonomies and so on. I can set the sorting and so on. Obviously, we don't have any kind of filtering at this point, but this is something that is on the roadmap, which again is one of those things we will be talking about in the live stream tomorrow or on catch up, whatever you're looking at. Uh, I'll link to that in the description below. 
You can also come into the settings and you can control where this is autoplay, how long, the different options with that, all the kinds of things you're pretty much used to when it comes to work with any kind of carousel. And finally, you've got your navigation options to set up whether you want to show arrows, upload your own SVG images, choose from different icons or have nothing at all. So the basic options are inside you. And again, if we update this and we'll take a preview of this, you can see after a second or two, it now loads in and we can, if we want to click and go through these, and click on any of these and go through the actual page itself. So all the things you'd expect from working with a normal sort of loop carousel, they're all available to you inside you. So I'll show you now what should happen when it comes to the pop-up. It's not showing on mine, but I'll demonstrate where it's supposed to be. So, you know, if you see this in a, a later update, hopefully you'll see that. So what we need to do is come into the templates option, come down to pop-ups. In there, we're gonna go ahead and create a new pop-up. We'll give it a name and we'll create our template. What I'm gonna do is grab one of the pre-built ones, so we'll just select that, we'll insert it into our design, and there we go, there's our pop-up all set up and created. So now, all we need to do is go to the publish option, and this will then give us all the options for triggers, you know, all those kinds of things. So we can add our conditions to say where this is gonna be displayed, we'll say the entire site, we're coming to our triggers, and you can see we can choose how we want to interact with these. And if you go into advanced rules, you can see we've also got more options inside here. So what we should be seeing on the advanced rules section, as you can see here in point three, is that we should have a new option that says schedule date and time, and then we can go ahead, set time zone starts and end time, and then we can save and close. But as you can see in my sample, we don't actually have that available on here, unfortunately. So when that is available, you'd simply go ahead and activate it, and then you have those options for setting the time zones and those kinds of things. And those are the kind of key updates that have been added. There are a few other little bits and pieces like accessibility options, uh, or improvements, I should say, the performance, you know, a couple of different things inside here, but those are the ones I think are most worthy of note in this update. Again, I pass the question off to you, is this enough? Is this the kind of thing you want to see rolled out alongside where we have now this roadmap where we've got at least some indication of what is coming, even if we don't know when it's coming? Let me have your thoughts down in the comment section down below. But as for it, I just want to sort of demonstrate what new options are coming in this beta version, and hopefully there's something that you'll be looking for or waiting for for a while. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.